Hello, my name's Mel. Welcome to my world. And for those of you that are new to my channel, it's all about self-built DIY camper vans and camper van related stuff. So if that's something that interests you, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. Now, if you're an introvert, much like I am, I like to be on my own. I like to go to places on my own. I like to spend a lot of time on my own, hence the camper van, right? So now, picture this if you will. You're on your own, you're in the middle of a field somewhere or on a deserted beach, if only. <laughs> Anyway, you've been there for a couple of days or even a couple of weeks in one spot. Now it's time to move. You need to go back to civilization. You need food, you need water. So basically, you get in your van, turn the key, you go to drive off, but oh no, something goes wrong. Your engine turns over really slow. You know that sinking feeling? Then all of a sudden, boom, it bursts into life. So you go from having that sinking feeling to a feeling of jubilation and joy because your engine started. But wait, what if your engine doesn't start? What are you going to do then? <laughs> You're pretty much, um, what's the word? Stuck. <laughs> Just like I'm stuck for words. <laughs> So you're stuck, you're stranded, you're not going nowhere. Now, there are a couple of ways you can get around this. Phone AAA, or you can put jump leads from your leisure battery to your starter battery. There's always ways you can get around it, but the best thing to do is to avoid this situation altogether. And there are a couple of things you can do to avoid this situation, to avoid your engine battery going flat in your camper van. Well, one of them, and this has worked for me for years, is to have a voltage sensing relay like this one. Now if you've got a voltage sensing relay like this one and you've got solar panels on your roof it shouldn't be a problem because not only does this cut in when your engine's running to charge your leisure battery it also cuts in when your solar panel is generating electricity. This will cut in and charge not only your leisure battery but also your engine battery because it's a voltage sensing relay it senses a higher voltage it turns on and then it connects your engine battery to your leisure batteries now the downside with this is that um if you've got your fan on or your fridge running on a hot day not only does your power come from your leisure battery it also comes from your engine battery as well because this is basically connecting them all up together so that's the only downside but the good news is you shouldn't really get a flat battery but I haven't got one of these. I've got a DC to DC smart charge controller, which is also an MPPT charge controller for my solar panels. It's all built into one unit. It's a ring DC to DC charge controller. So what am I gonna do? Am I gonna guarantee my engine battery doesn't go flat? And there's a simple solution to this, is to have a solar panel dedicated to my engine battery so that that keeps that topped up. And I've just so happens I've got one here and I've had this panel for years. It's only a little panel, but it's just enough to keep my engine battery topped up. And it works by plugging into a cigarette light socket, which is really handy. Downside is my cigarette light socket only comes on when the ignition is on. So I need to modify one of my cigarette light sockets. I've got two in this van. Uh, one's built into the dashboard, which is a cigarette light socket. And the other one's a 12 volt socket, but again, only comes on when the ignition is on. So I'm gonna try and rewire one of my 12 volt sockets so I can use this solar panel to charge my uh, engine battery. Right, let's get on with it. <laughs> so here is my 12 volt socket in my dashboard. As it says, 12 volt, maximum 25 amps. Perfect, right? But the only trouble is, it's not live when the ignition is off. And I want this to be live when the ignition is off and my van is stationary so that the power coming out of my solar panel is then fed to my engine main battery. So I need to rewire this to make sure that it's live on a permanent basis. So when I plug my solar panel in, it pretty much charges my battery. Um, but to do that, to get to the back of this socket, I need to take pretty much all this dashboard apart. Now to wire this up, I'm simply going to use the original plug. This is the original plug. I've cut the wire, the live feed, added my own cable to it, and the other end of this cable, I'm gonna fix to my battery via a fuse. The negative, I'm simply gonna leave that attached because that works anyway, that's grounded. So it saves me running aground. I might as well just use the one that's already there. And then this original plug, I can simply plug back into the back of this, put it all back together, and then connect the other end of this to my battery, like I say, via a fuse. 
right, let's just put it all back together. <laughs> so I've got this rather handy dandy fuse holder off of my Chinese diesel heater. So that come in handy, I'm glad I kept that. Um, it's got a connector on it as well for the battery, so all I've got to do now is connect that to that, connect it to my battery, and then my 12 volt socket should be permanently live. And the fuse I'm going to use is only a little 7.5 amp fuse. Just for now, see how we get on. Hopefully that'll be enough. Now remember what happened last time I was messing about with electrics? Yeah, it didn't end too well, did it? Now even though the battery tray is plastic and there's nothing really for this wire to rub against, except the lid. The lid that goes over the battery box is metal. So for that reason, I'm going to use some armored cable protection stuff. I'm just gonna thread that over the cable just to protect it where it enters into the battery compartment. Just so I know it's not gonna rub. That's the last thing we want is that to rub through and short out potentially cause a fire especially after our last video about fires in camper vans yeah like that so that protective sleeve just gonna poke it up there like that and then where it runs through into the battery compartment I know it's not gonna rub and to make sure it stays in place simply use a bit of tape there you go. Oh, now where it enters into the battery compartment I oh, know it's safe it's not going to rub on anything so now all I need to do is connect it up but before I connect it up I'm actually going to remove the fuse because <laughs> we don't want it to go bad do we not after last time anyway mind you it's a little bit late in the day so this video may go up a little bit late today here we go now there's my cable coming through with the armored sheath over it because there's a lid that goes over the top and that's going to protect my cable the rest of that's just going to tuck in there there's plenty of room there's no i mean it's a bit long i know i could have cut it a bit shorter but that's all right it's not going to snag anywhere we can just lay that on top of the battery like that put my fuse in hopefully fingers crossed nothing goes bang <laughs> so let's put our fuse in and hopefully nothing goes wrong i'll find the hole there it is <laughs> just kidding <laughs> there we are that's all right that's in there so now this should be should be live now how do i test it am i going to check that that's actually working uh, I need to find something to plug in. Oh no, my pump. So this is my nice new pump and I brought this to pressurise my water tank because my water tank works from pressure. I haven't got a water pump. The tank itself is pressurised with air and uh, yeah, that's what makes me water come to my tap. So I'll plug this in, switch it on, <laughs> it should work. There we go, brilliant. Now, plug the solar panel in now. Let's just get it up against the window, plug it in. It should have. It's in there. Yeah, it's in. It should have more voltage. Yep, there we go. 12 point. 62 volts so that means my battery is now charging by my solar panel there we go success right let's put it all back together put the lid back on there you go you can see now it's quite a sharp metal edge that is also yeah, I'm pleased I put that on there, that armoured cable protector. Yeah, that's a work. Um, right. Yep. Oh, but it's a never easier to slide back into the box. That's good. There we go, 
Let's go there. Who's over there like that? Push in there like that. Turn that like that. Just push that in there like that. Jobs are good and we're good to go. There you go. Now I've got a live 12 volt socket that is permanently live connected to my main engine battery. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, I've got all this crap back in there now. Well, there you go. Hopefully, flat batteries are now a thing of the past for me. Well, if you found this video entertaining, mildly informative, then please do give me the thumbs up. And don't forget, if you're new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. And by subscribing to my channel, it helps save the local wildlife because I've got two cats and they're both hungry. Thanks for watching. Ta da for now. from that sinking feeling to that feeling of uh what's the feeling <laughs> <laughs>